Kia ora everyone and welcome to today's Dream Team session brought to you by the Sir Peter Blake Trust. My name is Mike McRoberts and these Dream Team sessions feature inspiring Kiwis who want to encourage Kiwi kids to follow their dreams. Thanks so much for joining us. These inspiring people follow in the footsteps of one of our greatest leaders, Sir Peter Blake, who led Team New Zealand to victory in the America's Cup for the first time in 1995. Sir Peter was also a leader for the environmental work he did, in particular encouraging people to care for our oceans. Well, today we're going to hear from rocket man Peter Beck. Peter grew up in Invercargill and always knew he was going to build rockets. His parents were even called into a meeting with a school careers counsellor because what he wanted to do with his life didn't fit any predefined boxes. Peter has since founded Rocket Lab in New Zealand, the first private company to reach space in the Southern Hemisphere, and is revolutionising access to space for small satellites. We're thrilled to have Peter with us today to share his story. Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much, Mike. We'll get to your many, many achievements shortly, but how did you know at that young age, that boy that was caught into the careers counsellor's <laughs> office, that you wanted to build rockets? I think uh, it came from when my father first took me outside, um, and I don't know how old I was. I was must have been very, very young. And uh, he pointed up to the sky and I short, saw a, a, a shooting star, a satellite, go overhead. And he said to me, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's been created by humans, by us down on Earth. And I said to him, well, are all those other stars also created by humans on Earth? And he's like, no, 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 those are, those are suns and they have planets around them. And I remember the question was, well, you know, is, is the people on those planets looking back at me? And, uh, you know, that's, 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 the jury's still out on that one. <laughs> yeah. So it blew my mind. That was kind of the overview effect for me. It blew my mind to think that, that we didn't even know. We, we could be the only life in the entire universe. Wow. And from that day onwards, um, I always looked up. And, of course, at Invercargill, such a great vista for absolutely. stargazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yep. Yeah. But you must have thought, and people must have said to you, what, are you crazy? <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time somebody somebody said no or you're crazy, I'd be uh, be a very wealthy man. And, um, you know, that, that's that's just the reality of when you want to do something disruptive and something big, um, you know, you've you, you got to push against, against the tide a little bit, you know, a few times. So did you have that dream then? Did you know this is what I want to do? I want to build rockets and send them up into space? Or was it something that evolved? Uh, it evolved a little bit, but I would say by the time I was at high school, I knew exactly what I wanted to do at the beginning of high school. And it was always about, it was about the rocket, for sure. OK, and so you just went to the instruction manual that said, this is how I achieve this, right? Because, no, well, there was nothing like that. No, no one in New Zealand had done that. No one around the world had probably done that, apart from maybe some NASA scientists. Mm. Yeah, I mean, where, where I started was I started reading books and, um, and you know, there's, there's an awful lot you, you can learn. And over the years, um, you know, I always took jobs and, and, you know, directed my career to a point where I could, could go and do something that I really wanted to do in space. So, you know, I ended up at a, at a, a government research lab um, doing advanced materials and structures and superconductors. Um, and that was the last job that I had before, um, before I started Rocket Lab. Arguably the last real job I actually had. <laughs> How important is it to love what you're doing to achieve success? It's, it's absolutely critical. You, you have to be 100%, in fact, 110% passionate about, about what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Because there's good, good times and there's also really tough times. And, you know, it's, it's that passion, that drive to, that, that'll push you through the tough times. I think what might, might be handy to know for everyone watching at the moment is you know, how do you overcome those tough times, those obstacles? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it, it's belief, and not necessarily always belief in yourself, but belief in, in, in the goal that you're trying to achieve. Uh, most people think that Rocket Lab builds rockets. Um, it's, we do, but it's, it's not what wakes me up in the morning. And what wake, really wakes me up in the morning is the fact that we can touch billions of people with what we do. And if you think about it, a satellite, a satellite is a very unique piece of equipment. So a satellite is overhead New Zealand right now, it can provide weather to New Zealand right now. 10 minutes later it's over Australia and it's providing weather to Australia. 30 minutes later it's over America providing weather to America. So that one little box of electronics has the ability to touch billions of people and influence their lives. And that's what really, really gets me excited is, is what we're trying to do here is actually build infrastructure in orbit to affect people's lives down here on Earth. And two private companies in the whole of the world have done that, yours and another. Yeah, yeah, so Elon Musk and SpaceX have, uh, you know, a one private company launching satellites to orbit and, and Rocket Lab is the only other. Wow. Do you pinch yourself when you think of that? 
Well, yeah, I mean, it just, I'm, not, I'm not that that much of a reflective guy. There's an awful lot to go yet uh, further forward. But, um, you know, it's, it's a massive, massive accomplishment by the team. Um, you know, we, we, we not only did we, we go to orbit, we went to orbit. Um, we went to orbit with the smallest team and the smallest amount of capital in history. Well, you raise a very good point there. I mean, are you continually looking forward to the next thing? Is that how it works for you? Yeah, well, I mean, like I say, the definition of success for what we're trying to achieve here is that everybody's life on Earth is different because of what we've done. That's what we're trying to achieve. Well, fantastic. Listen, we've got some uh, questions from some students, if you don't mind Brilliant. me yeah, no, please. asking you a couple of those. What was the hardest part about starting Rocket Lab? Deciding to start it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's an old cliche that, um, you know, you can do absolutely anything you want to um, and you can be whatever you want to. And it's absolutely true. But the hardest thing of any of these kind of goals is actually deciding that you're going to do it. Once you've decided you're going to do it, the rest of it is, is, is just behind you. It's, you know, it's, it's plain sailing, pretty much. And, you know, the, the key to actually achieving these things is, is, is one, deciding you're going to do it. And two, just work. Um, work is what, what resolves it all. One of the things we tell uh, students is to, to write down their dream. I mean, how did you visualise or encapture your dream? Uh, well, for me, it was very easy. I knew exactly what my dream was. So, um, you know, I, I had to be doing something in space. Um, and as the years went by, it, it kind of sharpened um, exactly what, you know, where, where I could have the biggest impact. And you've never been backward in coming forward in terms of telling people exactly what your dream was. Is that part of how you work? You know, if you put it out there, it will happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's probably a fault um, because <laughs> for, me, for me, it's very obvious. Um, and, it, you know, I remember when I first started Rocket Lab, um, you know, I went, I went and spoke to the New Zealand government because, uh, you know, launching rockets is a... Is a, is a is, you know, has impacts, you know, politically and, and uh, economically. So, um, you know, I remember, I remember talking to, to the ministers there and, um, and th you know, they were kind of thought that, that I was crazy. And that was the, you know, the, the first really, you know, significant pushback that I, that I had where I thought, um, you know, wh why can't you see this? This is so blatantly obvious. And uh, it was only a few weeks later after that, though, that a minister, the same minister, actually opened Rocket Lab. So uh, it was a very quick conversion. <laughs> Well, when you did have your successful launch, mm. it led the news here mm. in New Zealand. It led the news pretty much all around the world. Mm. How did you feel on the day of the launch? This is one of the students from the, uh, one of the questions from the students. How did it feel when that rocket launched? Well, I mean, uh, when, when we went to orbit, um, you know, we were the we were the second ever private company, as you mentioned. Uh, New Zealand became the eleventh nation uh, to ever send something to space. Uh, it was the world's first electric turbo pumped and first carbon composite rocket. There was a lot of firsts. Their first private orbital launch site, uh, and you know, reflecting back, um, I can say nothing other than it was a great day. It really was <laughs> a good day. And you need to enjoy those successes, don't you? You do. You do. Yep. Um, but you know, uh, you know, it, it's always there's always the next the next hill to climb, and um, you know, it's it's about having that that goal and that that drive and that passion to make sure that you don't stop halfway through. Um, and that's you know that that's that's something that's very easy to do is you achieve sort of half of what you want to achieve, and it's easy to stop. Um, but the, the key is to just just drive to the end. Another great question here from a student who says. Um why is New Zealand good for rocket launches? Yeah, so um, New Zealand has a, a really fantastic um, space in, in the world. So when you're launching rockets, you can't launch over another country, um, you can't launch over any people, you have to shut all the airspace down and shut all the marine and shipping and, and shipping lanes and everything down for about 2,000 kilometres. So being a small island nation in the middle of nowhere with very little air traffic and very little sea traffic is the perfect thing when you're launching rockets. And, of course, you've been launching from Mahia Peninsula, yep. which, you know, I, I remember going to Mahia Peninsula as a youngster to go fishing yep. and spending Christmases there. They must love that. It's really put Mahia on the map. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, and, and look, it's such a fantastic community and, and having the support of that community has been really key for, for our success. So, you know, it's, it's marvellous to be down there and, uh, and, and being able to operate out of there. What difference does it make being a Kiwi operating on the world stage? 
Uh, I think I think Kiwis have um, ha have a, a different kind of approach to problems. Kiwis tend to see through problems rather than than um, than kind of stall on them. Um, also, I think on the world stage, New Zealanders are very well respected. We've, we're you know we we hold very high ethics, and um, you know I think most people will say that you can trust a Kiwi. So when you're raising capital, and we had to raise hundreds of millions of dollars of capital, um, when you when you're doing those kinds of things, uh, coming from New Zealanders is very very beneficial. And when you're overseas, when you're talking about Rocket Lab, do you feel like you're representing your country? Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Even though we are, you know, a, a global company, um, certainly, you know, purely for the fact that the, you know the launch site is is, is down in New Zealand. Um, whenever we bring customers or dignitaries, VIPs down, you know, it's it's a New Zealand experience starting from here in New Zealand all the way. Um, and you know, it is it is it is a privilege and a responsibility in, in a lot of respects um, for us to do that well. We're asking students to write down their dreams. Mm. What would your advice be to them in terms of actually making those dreams work? How do you set off that pathway? Well, I guess my first advice would be think big. Think really, really big. Really? Absolutely. Because it, from what I've learned is that it doesn't matter if it's a, you're going after to, to solve a small problem or a really big problem, the work is the same. The effort is the same. So you may as well not mess around and just go really, really big. So that would be my first advice is think of the biggest problem you can and that means that's the biggest opportunity and, and start solving that. That would be the first piece of advice. And then the, the second piece is, is just um, start working because it's all about work. Nothing gets done without work. And I guess when we look at our most successful people, we see them often as solo or lonely figures, but you take, it takes a lot of support, doesn't it, to, to get to this stage. You, you need a good support base of people around you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, from Rocket Lab's perspective, you know, your company is, is your team. The company is your people. Your company is not the colour of your rocket or the branding of it. It is the people in it. And, uh, you know, investing in the people in it and hiring, for us, hiring the best people in the entire world to come work for us uh, is really, really critical. So for a student, it might be getting mum and dad on board or their brother and sister or, you know, their friends and... Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Br bring in the people that, that can add huge amount of value. And, and if somebody, if, you know, the, the opposite to that, if, if somebody is, is giving you a hard time and, and doesn't believe in your vision, don't waste any time trying to convert them or letting them get in the road. Just, just walk right past. <laughs> Fantastic. And if they come against an obstacle or a bit of pushback, yep. uh, if it's their dream, what do they do? They just keep on pushing through. I mean, there is there's always inevitable obstacles, and sometimes you'll stand at the base of them and think they're, in, they're, they're, they're not solvable. But, but they're always solvable. And as, as you solve more and more of them, they become less and less stressful. I mean, when I first started the company, you know, there was a couple of real clangers where we couldn't get an engine to work. No matter what we did, we just could not get an engine to work. And I didn't sleep for a month, and we just couldn't get it to work. Then we got it to work. And then, you know, next time we couldn't get an engine to work, it was still stressful, but far less stressful. Whereas now, and I have you know, such confidence in the team, where if something doesn't work, I don't get too worried because I know we're going to solve it. I mean, it'll take work and effort, but we will solve it. Because you've learnt from that experience and you know you'll overcome it. Yep, absolutely. Nothing, nothing is impossible, that's the truth. <laughs> the sky is not the limit. The sky is not the limit. No, we're getting good with the clichés now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Peter, it's been fantastic having you here. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Mike. Well, thank you, Peter, for sharing your story today. You're inspiring the next generation of Kiwi leaders and we're excited to see where their dream takes them. If you're watching at home, now's the time to think about your own dreams, both for yourself and for New Zealand. So go to dreambank.co.nz and submit your dreams. Writing your dream down is the very first step towards achieving it. Remember to check out our other Dream Team sessions with incredible Kiwis at sirpeterblanktrust.org. Enjoy Leadership Week, everyone. And remember, dream big and believe you can. <laughs>